In my last video, I did a quick overview of a 4L80E for first time builders. And I had a few people in the comments ask me to do a video on rebuilding a pump. So this is kind of a step-by-step -step video on how to rebuild the pump for one of these. So here we go. Now it's time to do a little work on the pump. Just remember one of these bolts has a metal tab attached to it. And it's this one that goes right up here next to this little spring. And this pointy part faces down. Now the pump has got some sealing rings on it. They're a two-piece ring, thankfully. So you can just separate those. Right at the seam and take them off. There'll be new ones in the kit. Thankfully, these aren't like the Teflon rings that are a one-piece deal. So these are much easier to replace. Okay, and there's a bushing right here. Feels like it's just plastic. And then we can lift the top half of the pump off. And that's the stator half. All right, we need to turn this half of the pump upside down <clears throat> to get the front seal out, but this surface is machined very flat, so we want to make sure we don't do anything to mess that up. So set it down on something soft like a piece of cardboard. So if it moves around, it's not gonna scratch up that surface. So now I'm gonna use a seal remover tool to try and get this out. And if I can't get it out with that, then I'll have to tap it with a screwdriver and collapse it and pull it out that way. And I got the seal out by collapsing it. Now I need to get this bearing out. And you can see it's, it's staked in two places here and here to prevent it from spinning or moving forward. So now I gotta flip the cover over and use a bearing driver to get that up because you always need to replace this pump bushing. Every time you do a rebuild, that's mandatory. Well, my bearing driver set doesn't have a driver that matches that diameter exactly. So I'm just gonna have to use the screwdriver method here carefully. Well, the Transgo kit says we need to enlarge that hole right there to prevent front seal blowout. So, as nervous as that makes me, I'm going to have to suck it up and do it. Got a brand new quarter inch drill bit here, so let's see what happens, I guess. is going in a long way. It's making me nervous, but apparently this goes through quite a ways. Pump bushing is going to go in first. I'm just going to set that in here. Try to hit it straight with a bearing driver. And you just stake that bearing into those two little pockets again, which basically just means hitting it and bending it in. OK, 
Okay, on close inspection, I see something I'm not very happy with. By staking that bearing in there, it has put kind of an edge on the inside of the bearing. That can't be good. So now I'm gonna have to take some thousand grit wet sanding paper. And I'm just gonna have to go in there and carefully see if I can take that edge off without ruining the bearing. All right, I sanded that down with thousand grit. I've got no more edge there anymore. It's nice and smooth. I'm not, still not super pleased with that process, but if you're a professional transmission mechanic, you do this for a living, let me know in the comments if I did something wrong here. I staked that just the way they showed in the video, but I ended up with a, a bump and an edge on the inside here. So tell me if there's a better way of doing that. It's time to put this new seal in. For those of you out there that do this for a living, kind of curious, what is that hole for? Isn't that mostly blocked by the seal once you get the seal pressed in? Be interesting to know. Put that in the comments if you know the answer to that trivia question. There you go. Good. Next, there's a bunch of little pistons inside the stator housing that need to be taken out, inspected, cleaned, and put back in. So basically, there's a little snap ring right there and a plug that holds that piston. I think this is a torque converter one. So I'm just gonna take that snap ring out, slide this piston out, clean it, and put it back in. And here's the parts to that piston assembly. Piston looks good, no problem, it operates smooth. So now I'm just gonna spray some carb cleaner up in that bore. Clean that out, drain it, blow some air through it, and then I'll coat this piston in trans fluid and put this back together. Next up, right above that one, is this little torque converter clutch enable valve. So that just has this piece that goes in first, that little piston, and the spring on the outside. You just have to get underneath and tap this pin up. You don't have to take it all the way out. Just tap it up far enough so that it kind of clears that bore. Take the spring out and take the piston out. They both look good. I'm going to clean them, spray this out with carb cleaner and compressed air, loop that up with trans fluid, and put it back in just like the other one. Next up is a converter limit valve. Same deal. Inspect, clean, put back together. Okay, the last one to disassemble here is the pressure regulator. That one's just got a snap ring that holds it in. And then you just carefully slide it out. I actually dumped a little bit of transmission fluid down in here on the shaft to make it slide a little easier. And there we go. Okay, now out of all these booster valve parts, the stock stuff is on the bottom and the Transgo stuff is on the top. So the Transgo kit replaces everything except for the valve itself. Apparently this stock valve is pretty trouble prone, so it just replaces all of it. You reuse this valve and then there's this little sleeve that you use if you've got a narrow shaft on the end of your booster valve here. Mine doesn't, so I won't need that. But all the rest of this stuff will go in, and then that valve goes in. All right, so the piston went in first. <clears throat> the green spring goes in second. And then the washer goes in next. Goes on top of the green spring. And then the, the new pressure regulator and the new spring.
go in after that. With just a little bit of a fight, I got that valve down in there and got the snap ring in. So I think it's that's in, good to go. Next, we need to drill a hole in the pump, and it's a 3 64ths right there. You know how small 3 64ths is? My smallest bit down here is too big. 3 64ths is like a needle. Nobody has that size bit. But lucky for me, I got this old drill bit kit that I never, I always forget about. It's got a bunch of oddball sizes in it. And look at the very smallest one. See what that says? 364 sixty fourths. Got a whole bunch of them. So if I break one, I'm still in good shape. Well, here goes nothing. I stuffed some paper towels down in there and I put some uh, Vaseline down in there too to try to catch the metal shavings because I don't want these tiny metal shavings going everywhere. So we'll give this a shot and see what happens. Oh, wow. It actually worked, I think. Let's see. No, it goes all the way through. Now I gotta try and get my shavings out of there. up on that okay I got this all cleaned up and this will show you the size of that hole it's tiny it is like a needle all right put the gears back in the pump just remember on the center one this these square edges have to face up and now I aligned it so that this horseshoe shape is at the top and then on the stator part, the horseshoe shape is at the bottom. So I should be able to just flip that over and it should line up. Okay, I used the hose clamp method here to align the pump halves. Now I'm going to torque these bolts to 18 foot pounds. Here's a little snafu that got me. So I've got the overdrive assembly in there and the snap ring is in and everything. And then I put the pump in, I lowered the pump down in there and the pump needs to rest on this ledge here that goes all the way around. And the pump was not quite resting on this ledge. It was sitting up probably a few thousandths, maybe 20 or 30 thousandths. And the reason was because this drum was not down in all the way. You can see, if you look real carefully, this drum is down below this surface. It's down there, probably a quarter of an inch sunk down in. Well, mine wasn't. This drum was level with the top of this edge at first. So that tells you that something is not seated quite properly. So I had to take this over, overdrive drum out, and I found that one of the clutches in there, inside here, the small set of clutches, the inner drum wasn't quite seated all the way down in to those inner clutches. It was must have been hung up on the last one. So I had to kind of wiggle that around, get that inner drum to seat all the way in, and then I lowered this back down in here, and now look, now I've got a quarter inch clearance here. That's how it's supposed to look. So now when I lay the pump in here, the pump goes all the way down and touches this edge. So just keep an eye out for that when you put the overdrive assembly in. The last thing I forgot to show in the beginning was when you take your pump apart, pay close attention to this area of the pump. If you've got deep grooves there that you can feel with your fingernail, you're out of luck. You're going to need a new pump. 
there's no way to fix that. And you'll have a, a loss of pressure if you have grooves there. So mine, you could see a real slight witness marks there, but you couldn't feel them with your finger fingernail. So I was still okay to reuse mine. But if you got deep grooves there, you're gonna need a replacement pump. So anyway, thanks for watching this one. We'll see you in the next one.